Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Rice versus Rice. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Mr. Rice, you say you are ready to walk away from your 13-year marriage because you believe the child your wife is carrying is not yours. You claim Mrs. Rice has a history of cheating, and if today's paternity test proves you are not her child's father, your marriage will be history. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Rice, you admit to making mistakes in your relationship, but are confident the child you carry was fathered by your husband. And you hope the results will save your marriage. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Rice, you say everything is on the line today. Yes, Your Honor. Explain. It's like, I can't go through the rest of this marriage, like, well, the rest of this pregnancy without knowing because this happened before. And, and I'm trying... And, like, I need this test to, to move forward, period. So much is on the line. You need to have these results confirmed before the baby's even born. Yes. Because you don't think you're going to make it even to the birth of the baby, if not. That's correct, Your Honor. A lot of turmoil in your house, Mrs. Rice? Yes, Your Honor. Explain to the court what's going on. Well, I know I made a lot of mistakes in my past. You know, when he went to Iraq and everything like that, I did step out and, you know, I was enjoying life. But I realized my wrong. And I'm here to correct it because I know for a fact that this is his baby. Like, during the whole process, I, I decided to, like, change my life for him because I appreciate everything that he brings. And, and, and the household is real... is real hectic and everything like that. But I try all the time. I apologize all the time because I realize what's wrong, you know? And it started from me. And I wanted to end f from me. All right. <laughs> so, Mr. Rice, talk to me about what this past is. It's like the past, like, I went when I first went to Iraq or whatever, where I was happy. Like, I was, like, living in fairy tale life. Like, I was... You know, it used to be people in my platoon saying about other people's wives or their wives doing this, their wife. And I'm like, no, that my wife's not doing it. I don't believe none of that. Mm -hmm. And then come to find out, she messaged me, like, within, like, uh, probably a year. Like, I was almost done with my tour, and she messaged me saying she was pregnant. It, it broke my heart. I'm like, how can you be pregnant when I'm, when I'm here? So, so, wait. So, you left home a happy soldier and a married man until the bomb got dropped on you at your home. Yes, Your Honor. So, as we think about the new baby, you say this kind of triggers you, this whole process, and it makes you doubt. Yes, Is there anything else that makes you doubt? Yes, Your Honor. Like, we... Like, throughout the whole, you know, our whole marriage, we kind of separated and got back together and worked it out. But in 2018, we, you know, found out she was cheating again. Oh. How do you find out? Um, I seen deleted text messages. Like, not just, like, one text message. It's like, I'll text her, like, that day, then I'll somehow get her phone and I'll look through her phone, every single message deleted. So you became suspicious because yeah, who I'm... just deletes all the messages out their phone? I wasn't deleting all my text messages, all of them. per se, to keep it from him. It was more like I said, we was having problems and I didn't want him to see it and it sparks up something in him to make him feel like, you know, we going back through the same cycle when we already agreed that we was about to separate anyway. Even though we was back together, we were separating at that same sense, you know? So, you're not saying... You, you're admitting that you had text messages in your phone. I definitely had text messages in and my phone. And you're admitting that you cheated because at that point in your mind, your marriage was gonna be over. Yes. So, you admit you cheated. Yes. And you find that out. Yes. And do you confront her? Do you say, hey, you're doing this again? I thought we were working on our marriage. What happens? Yeah, I confronted her, and she, she told me the truth about what was going on, because she said I was distant and, and all that. So, I, we decided just, just to separate. So, we, we separated, like, the whole rest of the 2018, and then we end up getting back together January 2019. Yeah. And throughout that whole beginning of the year, you know, everything is all right, but I keep seeing messages. Now, she's not deleting them. Now, I'm seeing the messages from the, uh, the, another dude It'd be small, subtle messages, but I'm like, yo, why are you still in contact and with then this I'm, person? I'm not... I'm not really replying, you know? If I do reply, it's very small, and there's no sexual relations between me but and him or anything. But still, he's supposed to be cut off, period. And but I, your I, husband I, I doesn't know that. that. 
And, and given the history, he want to know why anybody even texting. Yes. I understand that. <laughs> Reply with one word, five words, an emoji. But I barely reply. It don't matter. Yes. I understand. At that point, his mind, what are we up to now? Yep, and then I find out, like, you know, April come, then I find out she's, she's pregnant. So at first, I'm not thinking of, you know, anything bad. I'm thinking like, oh, finally, you know, she finally get pregnant. But then I just started feeling like, uh, what about those messages before? Like, mm -hmm. those past messages mm -hmm. from Mar February and March, mm -hmm. like, yeah. like what, what, what's, what's that about? So it gave me more doubt, like, maybe this one is not my child either. Because you're counting back and thinking to yourself, okay, we're pregnant now. You say we're pregnant, but just Couple last months ago, month, a few, months few ago. weeks ago, I'm seeing messages on your phone. Yes. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. When was the last time you were intimate with this other guy? January. In January. Yes. But your husband still sees texts in March. And then you pregnant in April. Wow. Yeah, but I, I wasn't replying to most of them. I really was not To replying. most of them? Most of them, because I can't sit here and lie to you, you know? I don't want you to. Only one I replied to is when he said happy birthday, because my birthday is in March. So when he said happy birthday, I just been kind and said thank you. You know, it always been real subtle. It never been like no conversation type stuff. But the real truth is you really have been exhibiting the same behavior that led to the first <laughs> incident. And I, I mean, at the point that you say I cut somebody off, cut off means don't, he... hold on, cut off means don't talk to him. I understand. Right? So if we're back on now, there's such thing called blocking a number. Yes. Or mm -hmm. changing your number. And once he's forgiven you for, for such a huge mistake, it doesn't seem like you're doing enough to make sure it doesn't happen again. I mean, how am I supposed to do that extra step when he's so distant. He barely touch me. He barely take me out. He barely have a conversation with me. Like, we... It's no love there. It's no love there at all. And every time I turn around, he's ready to walk out the door every five... Well, let me ask you something. Are these men that you running around with oh, outside of your marriage, are you in love with them? Because you say it's no love here. Well, he's married to you, and he's also committed to you, and he also didn't leave no, you and divorce no you when there. you had a child by somebody else yeah. within the marriage. I don't know what love is, but that sounds pretty much like it. It's no, no, it's no. I really don't know what love is to you, but that sounds like it. So when you say he don't love me, he, he's, he's not showing me love, what you're doing out there ain't love either. Right. Mr. Rice, I want to understand your doubt. I want to understand what's your other doubt. I, I realize you say these text messages are coming in. Mm -hmm. What other doubts do you have? We've been together 13 years, and I never got her pregnant. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of like, that's another doubt. I'm like, I don't think I could have kids. What are you feeling? Why are you crying, Ms. Rice? Because I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to fix this at all. It's like, ugh, I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. Yeah. This is what this courtroom is for, to speak our truth, to try to get a greater understanding, to share what's in our hearts so we can try to figure out how to mend them. Yeah. I'm just tired of hurting him, you know? I just want to end that, that bad cycle and start something new. You know, as a family, with nothing but good, positive vibes, you know? You know, and leave the negativity alone, because I'm really ready to leave all that in the past. So, Mr. Rice, you hear your wife speak about what she wants this life with you to be. Mm -hmm. You don't think you can father children. Yeah, because I, I took... Uh, I ordered an at-home fertility... Um, test online, and it came back that I had a low sperm count. So that's that's another doubt. 
in my head. And I'm trying to fight off all the doubts, like, no, this is mine, I believe her, you know, she didn't do anything, I could have kids, but the doubt is still there. I personally feel like he was in the military, the VA, you know, gave him some type of reimbursement money or whatever the case may be. And I think I hurt him so much, he was so sad and down and things like that. So when he got this money, you know, it kind of boosted him up a little bit. Like, he, he stood up stronger, he held his head up high, you know? And I just feel like that kind of made his little sperm swim, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, he just, he stood more confident. And <laughs> that's what, where this come from. All right, yeah, a confident man makes some confident sperm, <laughs> right? <laughs> appreciate your theory. <laughs> but in this courtroom, we do deal with science. Yes. <laughs> so I would like to call upon Dr. Jamila Gator so I can ask her some questions about low sperm count. Jerome, will you escort her in, yes. please? <sighs> Hello, Dr. Gator. Hello. Thank you for joining us again. You know I always have questions. Yes. Mr. Rice has testified that he took an at-home sperm count test that he purchased and it determined that he had a low sperm count. What did that really mean? So, he testified that he did a home sperm kit. To your testimony, the sperm count was low. Um, and so then in that case, really you need a full semen analysis to look at all the factors and actually count the number of sperm to see whether it is or is not possible to father a child. Yes, and then he submitted to that test. Yes. Because the court ordered that. And so what did those results of that test reveal? So that semen analysis was very abnormal. And normally, 15 million sperm or more is a normal sperm count. And in this case, there was only 3 million sperm. And so, all in all, that basically leaves less than 200,000 sperm available to father a child, which is extremely low and makes it very difficult. Wow. How are you feeling after you hear Dr. Gator's testimony? I don't know. It's like... It's making me feel like it's not my child. And you feel like it's happening all over again? Yeah. Ms. Rice, have you prepared yourself that if this is not your husband's biological child? I did. But nothing happened. It's, this is just a miracle baby. Like, that's just how I'm looking at this, you know? Okay. Yeah, because I didn't do anything with anyone. Well, I think it's time that we get down to the bottom <laughs> of this. Because your marriage is on the line. Jerome, may I have the envelope, yes. please? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In order for us to determine paternity, a prenatal DNA test was performed. A blood sample was drawn from the mother and fetal DNA was isolated from that sample. Genetic analysis was performed and a probability of paternity was generated. In the case of Rice versus Rice, when it comes to the child that Mrs. Rice is currently carrying, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Rice, you are the father. <laughs> <laughs> you can stand over there with your wife and your baby. 
How does that feel, Mr. Rice? Good. <laughs> uh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it was hard for me to come because I know I'm messy. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very messy, but my love is real. <laughs> you do have a miracle baby. <laughs> You really are gonna be such a wonderful dad. Thank you, Ron. And you know what? You can be a wonderful mom right along with him. <laughs> I know you say you're messy. I love that you said that about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. These are the days that just really warm our heart here in this courtroom because we don't always get to deliver the results someone wants. So it never gets old to see two people be so happy to be bringing new life into the world together, to raise it and love it, and most importantly, create limitless possibilities for their life. <laughs> I wish you the very best. Court is adjourned. <laughs>